Welcome back. In this video, we're going to create our first clickable elements as well as utilize the built-in simulator for the first time. To get started with our first button, which here's our example we're going off of, within the designer's control panel, we're just going to click on button and click and drag to create a button within column zero, row zero of this grid. You can tell I've put it in the right place here because my parent-child relationship looks good. The next step for me at least is always to get rid of these pesky margins. Now I've got my first button element and the next thing to do is just to add some common text here. In this case, we're going to name it on slash off. The next thing to consider is whether or not to name our element. In this case, it's just called button but I'm going to give it a discrete name called on off. This will be important later if I want to reference this control by name to do something with it or to trigger an action off of pressing it or holding it or something else. Another option is you can modify the button's appearance. Here we'll make it easier to show up just by simply changing the background and modifying the discrete value here to red. Now we have a button with a red background and white foreground. We have other options we can change as well as adding an icon, further adjusting the text, and adjusting the layout. If I wanted to relocate this button to within the same grid but maybe over to the right one square, I would adjust that by changing the grid.column value from 0 to 1. I'm going to press tab to confirm which you'll see me do throughout this series rather than pressing enter. Now you can see that our button has jumped over to column 1 while still staying within that first parent grid. Again, to move it downwards, I would change the grid row from 0 to 1. If I want to increase the size of the button from left to right, I would increase the number of columns being spanned. Here I'll change it from 1 to 2. The same works as well going up and down using row spans. I'll go ahead and change the button back to where we want it, back in that 0, 0 spot, which is always the most top and most left grid column. Now my button is constrained correctly again. I'm going to go ahead and use the built-in simulator throughout this video series rather than my physical device. That's because the simulator is basically identical to the device screen and it's much easier for me to video. Now I'm going to test the button by utilizing the built-in simulator. The simulator acts exactly as my physical device would if I would transferred it using Dropbox like I did in the first video. It's much easier and faster to test with your computer utilizing this method. However, if you're testing device commands, make sure that your computer, just like your mobile phone needs to be, on the same physical network than the devices you're trying to control, or else it won't be able to communicate with them. At the top, I'll hit the home control, and then over to start. Now you can see that the grid element lines have been disabled as we are running it just like we would on our phone. In fact, if we were to click this button, you would actually see some visual feedback there, just like you will on your phone. When I've selected it and holding my mouse button down, it changes color slightly versus when I've let go. Now we don't have any commands associated with this button yet, but we know that the button is functional to this extent. The next thing we want to do is learn how to copy and paste controls because it's much quicker to duplicate controls in this manner. First I'll go ahead and change this color back to the default value as we don't need it to like that. And then instead of creating a new button and following all the same steps, I'll simply select this button within the designer and select copy. Now it's important where I choose to paste this because I do want it to still be within this parent. To do so, I'll click on the parent grid and select paste. Now you can see that we have a copy of our button element. Now you can't see it over here in the designer because they're actually sitting on top of one another, both in column zero, row zero. The first thing I'll do is change the discrete name to the next button name, tab to confirm, and then I'm going to scroll down here to the bottom and change this one to column one. The last step is to change the actual text within, and now we have our second button. I'll go ahead and do this for the next button as well. Now we have all three buttons needed at the top. Now another thing to consider when creating a remote is how much space you want to allow between each button. In this example, each button is literally right next to each other, which could create a problem with user interface as it's very easy to press one button inadvertently when trying to press another. What we could do is create some extra space here between these first two buttons so that users 
are a little more sure when they're actually clicking the button. We can do this utilizing margin. Usually 10 margin is about enough on each button. I'll add those now. You can see that just typing 10 for the margin and pressing tab will modify the margin in 10 in all directions. I've got a few more buttons to create, so bear with me while I take care of those as well. For the next set of buttons, according to our map, looks like we could just get away with some icons which might save us some time and text later on. We'll create this button the exact same way, in fact I'll just copy one of the existing buttons to start with, and we'll go ahead and move it into position. Now this time I'm going to go ahead and remove this text by resetting it to default and instead I'm going to select an icon by choosing this ellipse here. Within the value I'll click on the drop down and this time I'm just going to start typing REW and we've already got a built-in element. Clicking OK here we can see that the element is now in place. This time I'll go ahead and copy these and begin modifying for the rest of the buttons. Now we're ready to make the up, down, left, right, enter as designated on the remote. I'll create those now starting in the next grid. I could click and draw another one there, but I think it'll be just as easy to t copy the button from this grid using control C, select the next down parent grid and control V to paste. Because I chose an element that was in row zero, column zero, it's going to now be in row zero, column zero of this parent. Instead, I actually want it in column two, and it's going to be up. And I believe there's an icon for this one as well. Chevron up, okay. And I just need to delete my text, and that looks pretty good. I'll go ahead and create the others. For enter, I've got a few different options as far as shapes I could do. Let's see what we've got. Is there anything for enter? Okay, I'm going to use the square stop instead right now just as a placeholder until we might get something better later on. And this is gonna be a good one. Okay, so now we have all of our buttons done. The next step is just to create that volume slider and mute toggle at the bottom. Under controls, I'll go and click the slider and click and drag down in the area where I know it needs to go. 
first step is always to get rid of those pesky margins that I hate so much. This time, our vertical alignment, rather than top, I want it to be in the center. I'll get rid of the height as well. The last step is for the toggle switch, which I'll draw out as well. I'll go ahead and set a few things to default here and make sure that we are also centered vertically. Okay, now we have our basic simple layout with all of our grids and buttons and controls in place. We could go ahead and start the simulator now and go ahead and make sure that these are all roughly the size and location that we want. Now is a good time to transfer this down to our physical device and do some physical testing there. Here's our volume control slider that's going to work down at the bottom, as well as the volume or uh, mute control on and off. That's all we've got for this one. We'll see you in the next video.